Good evening, everybody. Praise the Lord. We're glad to see you tonight. Uh, glad to, that you can see me tonight. Praise the Lord. And uh, we thank God for this opportunity for us to study and fellowship together. Um, we still have time. If you just got the link, um, you can send the link to a friend, send the link out to a relative, or somebody, loved one. Uh, you know, that's your way of evangelizing, just sharing the word with someone. Um, saying invite you know inviting someone to come join me in my fellowship study of the word um, we're excited we say welcome to Haskell Heights First Baptist Church otherwise we nickname ourselves the height and we're excited about being in Bible study tonight we thank God for his grace his mercy his peace thank Camille for the uh, for the powerful prayer tonight we we just we bless God for um, our, our prayer administrator, we thank, just thank God for those, our prayer warriors. Um, it delights my heart that we are becoming a praying church. I know that, um, that, that it's, a, it's a sacrifice, and I know that it's a, a labor of love to ask you all to, um, to chime in. You know, don't, don't worry about what you sound like. Don't worry about, um, you know, being on a big stage or anything like that. Just we're, we're going to be recruiting more folks to get on the prayer line with us. So if you've not done the prayer line, please pray about it. Consider being a part of the prayer line. Uh, we're not in competition. The Lord uh, takes every prayer of the, the righteous. They avail much, and, and, it, and he takes the, the prayers of the saints as sweet-smelling savor. Amen? So don't be bashful. Don't be shy. Don't be uh, alarmed or any such thing. Uh, pray for 30 seconds, pray for uh, three minutes, whatever is the, is the case. We just really want a praying church. And it's important that we be become a praying church simply because um, you need a praying home. You need a praying, um, you, we need to be praying parents. We need to be praying spouses. We need to be praying brothers and sisters. We need to be praying friends. And, and, and literally the power of prayer can, can take over the, the situations of our lives and turn things that are upside down, right side up. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. And for everyone who's visiting with us tonight, we say to you, uh, thank you for taking your time out to visit with us here at Haskell Heights. Uh, there are a few announcements that we want to, um, to, want to uh, read for you tonight. The first of, of which is uh, a great big wow hug and thank you so so much so so much for um the um anniversary service on sunday was just uh was, was an encouragement was really just filled with power but more than that filled with love and we thank thank you for just being you sister gail and i um are are just overwhelmed with the with the expressions of love and our words really can't express our thanks and gratitude for all of your your love, your encouragement, and and all your generosity um, toward us. We thank you for um, just being you, Amen. And uh, and and we we bless God that that the Lord would uh, as you you continue uh, here, you pray for uh, increased anointing that you would pray for the Lord to strengthen me, and as He strengthens me, I intend to strengthen this body, and so. Uh, that means your homes will be strengthened. That means your faith will increase. That means uh, your blessing will manifest all, all of those things. Amen. And so we, we thank God for you today and, um, and for what you've done for us, what you continue to do for us. Amen. Um, also want to remind you that Women's Day Choir Rehearsal is going to be uh, held on Saturday, September 17th. Saturday, September 17th. I believe it's 11 o'clock. We'll, we'll make sure that we, we get that out. But uh, it's going to be Saturday, September 17th uh, for Women's Day Choir Rehearsal. For all of you who would uh, would not count it robbery to be a part of the Women's Day Choir, please show up at the church uh, in the sanctuary. They'll be rehearsing on Saturday. Children's Church is going to resume this coming Sunday, September 18th. So bring your children, your grandchildren um, uh, down in the lower level. And so we're asking that you would uh, avail uh, you know, avail yourselves to the uh, children's church and the ministry uh, being provided to our young people. Amen. We want them to grow in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And uh, and the only way for them to do that is for them to 
really sit under the word. And so we thank God for our teachers. We ask uh, you, that you would just really stretch hands and bless our teachers that are um, not only in school, but the teachers that are going to be sharing the spiritual wealth and knowledge um, with, with um, our young babies and with our young people so that they can prosper and be in health even as their souls prosper. Amen. And so we ask God's blessing and anointing upon them. Uh, Women's Day weekend is, is arriving. It's going to be Friday, September 23rd. Uh, you're going to have an outdoor movie, weather permitting, outdoor movie night. Bring your own lawn chair and a friend and join us at 730 for snacks, fellowship, and fun as we kick off the Women's Day weekend. Amen. So there's going to be a, 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 an outdoor movie on the grounds of the church. And uh, bring your chairs. We do, If you don't want to bring a chair, we'll have chairs at the church. But if you want one that's comfortable to be out there on the outside and there will be snacks and fellowship uh right there on the outside amen women uh the weather permitting and i'm sure that if you know if if that has to turn into uh a, another uh, a movie inside the sanctuary then uh the, then just uh we'll govern ourselves accordingly but women come out and be a part of friday september 23rd saturday september 24th is going to be the final rehearsal for women's day choir at 11 o'clock and then Saturday, the uh, 24th um, at 11, come please, you know, they're asking to please join them for uh, the choir rehearsal this Saturday and then one week uh, following at 11 o'clock. Then Sunday, uh, September 25th is going to be Women's Day. The theme is we're in this together. We're in this together. Our speaker will be Minister Donna Davis with a powerful word from the Lord. Um, so, so we're asking that the women come, invite your friends, come and, uh, you know, call your, your uh, all of your, uh, your brothers and sisters in the body and say, come on, let's felt, let's come together so that we can be together and, um, and, and, and worship on that day. Amen. Uh, we're asking that you would uh, just take time and be in prayer for uh, those who are infirmed or afflicted, those who are having um, uh, medical challenges, those who are suffering through medical situations right now, sickness, ailments, um, any kind, coronavirus, whatever, any other kind of uh, viral or bacterial infection, blood disorder, uh, mental challenges, whatever be the case, emotional distress, whatever, we want to come uh, and, and stand in the gap for our brothers and sisters right now and ask that you would please uh, just just take a moment and ask God's favor over um, their bodies, over their minds, over their hearts, over their blood, over the, everything. We, we, we pour out the power of God upon the people of God so that they might receive the healing that, that Jesus Christ died to, to afford for us. Amen. By his stripes, we are healed in the name of Jesus. And so we're asking that you would uh, help us stand in agreement for all of our brothers and sisters who may be battling any kind of illness, ailment, or sickness right now, and we command it to leave in Jesus' name and to, to, to yield the vessel uh, according to God's original intent and design. Amen? That, that's our authority, and we, we establish that as our privilege. Um, we're, we're not trying to do hocus-pocus. We're not doing magic. We're just really coming into agreement with what we know God desires for us is to be in health and prosper as our souls prosper. Amen. All right. Birthdays today. Uh, Sister Almeida Carter and Sister Rosa Mae Wilson and Sister Crescenda Lemon. So on today, we say happy birthday to all of our uh, loved ones. And we ask God's blessing, rich blessing over you in this brand new year to come. Amen. All righty. OK, so uh, tonight, if you did not get a chance to get the handout, let um because we because we had so much volume on last week in our study um, that I asked you to we're going to just do a continuation on the same sheet. So there is no new sheet. So the Bible study handout for tonight is still dated last week, 9-7-22. And it's the uh, it's the welcome back. Amen. And so if you don't have that, I, I sent it out in the in the uh, in, in the text. But if you don't have a copy of it uh, right now, you can go out to the website and get a copy or you can go out to the uh, to the church app and get a copy of the same handout from last week okay all right so um, asking you to uh, do, let's just pray and we're gonna go ahead and get started and we're gonna finish up tonight with uh, this first section in chapter 8 Ma 8 of Matthew we'll be there for just a moment and and that's really because uh, it, there, there's some 
uh, there's some thematic material, there's some themes in here that we really want to grasp. And in fact, we're going to, uh, um, before I pull the whiteboard back out kind of thing, we're going to study some things in, um, in, 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 in chapters 8 through 12. We're going to be, con you know, kind of taking our time through Matthew because once we have Matthew under our belt, then, then it's really kind of, we can point out some of the differences in Mark, Luke, and John. Um, but but, but the, the bigger volume, for instance, um, some of the, of, the, of the 600, I believe it was 661 passages in, in the book of uh, Matthew, uh, 600, I mean, in, in the book of Mark, 661 chapter, chapters or passages in the passages in the book of Mark. Let me slow down. And, and uh, 600 of those are, uh, are, are duplicated in Matthew. So really, you know, once we get a good handle on Matthew, then really the others are so much more understandable because um, this is really the bulk of the material. So we're going to take our time. That's what I really wanted to tell you. So tonight we'll finish up Matthew 8, 1 through 17, and then we'll continue next time with the uh, verses 8, 18 through 34. Okay, then we'll move on from out there. Now, just just for a note of context, um, that that remember we were saying that as as we got into Matthew, you know, we we look at Matthew. We got the genealogy chapter one. You got you know you, you got the uh, announcement of the birth and you know the baptism. You got the wilderness experience, and then we got the Sermon on the Mount that comes to us from. Uh, chapters 5 through 7, and then we get to chapter 8 where ministry just starts and begins with Jesus. And so I like to, I like to coin the Sermon on the Mount as the disciples' kind of orientation program. They are given a, an overview of what work Jesus is getting ready to introduce them to. And so by the time we get to chapter 8 in Matthew, he has, pull, he has pushed them right out into the very work that he has uh, taught them so much about that they're, they're going to have to take and take all those kind of textbook principles that he taught them on the Sermon on the Mount and use them in real life scenarios and real life situations. And what's good about it for us is that um, we come to know the word and, and, and we it's our responsibility to use the word in our real life scenarios. Uh, just like the disciples of old, we are dis disciples in this new age. Um, in this new time. I don't like to use the word new age because that really kind of means something else as far as biblical language is concerned. But, but, but in this new time that we, that we live in, that the disciples of old experienced Jesus and we likewise, as we go through the word, we experience him in this new context. But we are still yet disciples walking with Jesus through the passages of the scripture and, and reacting and learning and increasing and understanding and getting the principles in us so that we can be effective for this kingdom building assignment. All right. So uh, if you don't have the, the, uh, the handout for tonight, then we're going to ask you to please um, turn with us to Matthew chapter eight. And uh, we looked at we looked at verse uh, one through about verse four on last week is where we left off. And, um, and, and, and we know that, that uh, as we left off from last week, we were talking about how the Bible is really centered in on Jesus. So now we're in the Gospels. And so Jesus was coming, promised the promise of his coming in the Old Testament. Jesus has a, arrived, right? And then Jesus is coming again in the last part of the Old, in the last part of the New Testament. But the Gospels specifically really talk about Jesus arrived, he's on the scene, and so now we get to know who he is, and that's what the disciples are experiencing. Amen? So I'm going to start again um, just from, just from uh, verse 1 in chapter 8 so that we can do some a review and, and, and give some context from here. Now, and, and I'll make, a, I'll make some comments. So if you got a notebook or if you can write down on somewhere or whatever it is that you, you would like to do, I want you to just kind of grasp some of this so that we can put this into a, uh, in, into a real life scenario for our, for ourselves tonight. All right. So he starts off in his ministry when he walks the street ministry or um, the, the, the ministry of, of Jesus now on the earth situation here. Um, 
chapter 1 says large crowds followed Jesus as he came down the mountainside. So when large crowds are following him, we know that this is no longer the period of obscurity where nobody knows anything about him. But this is now the period of popularity, right? Where people are hearing about all the, the, the miraculous things. They're, they, they are starting to get to know him. Um, the book of John is going to talk about um, that if we were to even try to catalog all the things that he did, that the volumes on earth would be, not be enough to contain the works that Jesus actually did. Right. And so what we're seeing in, in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John is really just a subset of other things, of all the things that he did. And we know that the word, what God left and preserved for us in the word, in the Bible, is, is what he wants us to have for now so that it can impact us properly to be able to do the work he's called us to do. So large crowds followed Jesus as he came down the mountainside. Verse two says this as suddenly. A man with leprosy uh, uh, approached him and knelt before him. We talked about this that um, that that this this man had must have had a sense that listen, this Jesus can help me. Amen. Have you ever gotten to the place where you recognize that you know what I, I don't know how to handle this myself. I'm going to take it to the Lord. I'm going to take my situation, my concern to the Lord because I believe he can help me. That's where this man was. And he said, um, Lord, the man said, if you are willing, look at this. If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. That, that's really, th there goes the whole principle right there. He says, you know, Lord, if you're willing, I, I know this about you. I've heard this, that, that, that you can make me clean, but I just need to know if you're willing to do it. Now, the powerful part for us is that he says, look what he says in the world. He said, um, um, he, Jesus reached out to him and touched him and said, I am willing. You remember we talked about this? He touched him because these were the untouchables. He was a leper and, and he there was untouchable. He was dirty. He was, the, you know, the folks that we don't like to be next to, don't like to uh, be near, the, the untouchables of life. Amen. And, and sometimes we can find ourselves in uh, as an untouchable in life. Right. That it's not just always them, but sometimes it's us. And so it would behoove us. It, it would really make sense that because um, had, you know, we used to say it like this, uh, but for the grace of God. Right. But had it not been for God's grace, it it could have been me. This could have been me. And so when you see someone down and out, it's important that we don't just kind of push them down further down than, than, than where they are. We are the lifters of men and women's heads. We are the ones who will provide the encouragement. Jesus touched him. He said, I am willing. What's powerful about that for me is that by a principle, we can understand this about Jesus is that um, he said, I know you can heal me, but I just need to know if you're willing to heal me. And so Jesus says, I'm willing. He does not want us to be sick. He does not want us to be in this kind of distress. That's what he came for. Now, now let me, let me, let me temper this because a lot of people would stop and go, well, you know, um, I'm not supposed to have any trials and tribulation. That's not true. The Bible says that in this world, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Jesus is saying that yes, we're in a context and we're in a we're in an environment where sickness will come. We're in an environment where trouble will 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 sometimes find us. We're in an environment where things aren't aren't going to uh, match the perfection of heaven. But 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 he says, but I've overcome the world. And so what you're seeing here is a demonstration of his desire for us. That that he says, I am willing, be healed. And so that's all he said, be healed. So the word is the agent, is the power to turn medical situations around. Man, it's a surgical instrument. And inst instantly the leprosy disappeared. Verse four, then Jesus said to him, don't tell anyone about this. Instead, we'll talk about that, especially next week um, or, or the week after. We'll, we'll really kind of hone in when we get to chapter nine hone in on, don't tell anybody about this because that's a particular thing we need to pay attention where Jesus is saying, it's not time yet. Kind of don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. 
and, and take along an offering, the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a, look at this, public testimony. What he's done for you. What has he done for you? There goes the idea of testimony. This is going to be your public testimony. That, that you can say that he touched me. And every one of us has a testimony of how God has delivered us from danger, from uh, he's delivered us from our, our own uh, situations of distress. I'm looking for words there, so I don't, I don't want to be offensive, but delivered us from sinful lifestyles that would have consumed us had it not been for his grace. Wow, has delivered us. And so um, he is a deliverer. He said, but this will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. Now, jump down to verse 5. When Jesus returned to Capernaum, so, um, so again, he, he's, he's out, and we're going to do, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a map of where Jesus went, because Jesus, in his travels, you know, he, he's born in Bethlehem, way down here in, in Israel, but then he actually lives in Nazareth, way in, oh, up in Galilee, way up there, and Capernaum is in the, in, in, in the uh, Galilee um, area, right? So he says, so he returned to Capernaum, a Roman officer, look at this, somebody circled this, a Roman officer came and pleaded with him. Uh, th doesn't that just kind of shake you that, that this wasn't just about the disciples, this wasn't just for the Jews, this wasn't, but this is a Roman officer. This was, uh, this is somebody who belongs to the, uh, the, the very group of people who nailed him to the cross, right? You, you know what I'm talking about. A Roman officer. Before, before we get to all of that, th this was not part of the religious ex establishment, but this is a Roman officer. Not just a Gentile, but, a, but, uh, but, but an officer or part of the legislator, that legislature that is against this kind of power. This guy shows up. This Roman officer came and pleaded with him. And he said, Lord, my young servant lies in bed, paralyzed and in terrible pain. We have got to stop there and just say, you know, he brought his cares to Jesus. He brought his problems and said, Jesus, um, he's basically saying just what the leper says. I, I know you can do something about this. I know you can. I know you can. Can, can y'all say that right now about uh, uh, something that's going on in your life? Can you just take from, from Bible study tonight and just say like these two episodes here and just say, God, I know you can. I know you can. That's not my question. I, I, don't, I don't disbelieve that you can. Now, a lot of us, you know, most of us would never doubt that God is able. But, but you know, but, but there's something else. And he says, the, the, the leper says, but, but are you willing? And Jesus takes away that whole situation. He says, yes, I'm willing. So this one comes and says, um, my, my young servant lies in bed, paralyzed and in terrible pain. Um, Jesus says to him, I will come and heal him. Now look what happens next. Verse 8, but the officer said, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come into my home. Just say the word and, and um, from where you are. Just, my God, just say the word from where you are. Just say the word from where you are. Y'all getting that? That you don't even have to go to the place where the trouble is. That, that there's something that this Roman officer recognizes about Jesus that, that you can just say the word from where you are. Now, this is the New Living Translation, um, you know, and, and, and so that, you know, we can get some of the imagery. But he says, just say the word from where you are and my servant will be healed. He says, listen, I, I don't doubt that, that you don't even have to come into my home. In fact, I'm not even worthy of you coming into my home. He has done what most folks um, what, what are, are in need of today. He basically has said that's part of the that's part of the prayer of salvation is to recognize that I am a sinner and I need to be saved by grace. You can't you can't desire or even request or ask for salvation if you don't believe you're a sinner. And so he says, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house, but just say the word 
And look what he says. Um, Because I know this, verse 9, he says, I know this because I'm, I am under authority of my superior officers and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say go and they go or come and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. So this Roman officer says, hey, listen, I'm able to, uh, this, this is big stuff because he's able to take of the situation of the world that he lives in and, and use it to make sense about how things work in heaven. He's making a parallel right now to say that I know how this works because I'm a man who's under authority. The ones who have authority over me, if they if they say something to me, I must do it. And if I, I, I have positions of authority over yet other people, and all I got to do is say to them, come and they come, or go and they go, I know how this works. And so he's basically saying that Jesus, that you are, uh, you are one who has authority, not just authority to say come and go or do this or do that, but you have authority over sickness, over disease. You, you, have, you have authority over ailment. All you have to do is say the word from where you are. Can you imagine the implications of that? That if we, if we start to become the kind of body who says, you know what? We, we're going to take a moment and we're just going to send the word down to, down, down to Prisma. We're going to send the word over to, to Providence, which is MUSC now. We're going to send the word over to uh, Lexington. We're going to send the word in the name of Jesus for healing. We don't have to go there to the place where it happens, but the authority is in the word. It's in the atmosphere. Amen? My God. And he, he said this. Um, he said, uh, they do it. Look what Jesus says in verse 10. He said, when Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to those who were following him, meaning that he turned to his disciples. Basically, look what he's getting ready to say. Do you see this? This is a Roman officer. Not, not the ones I have handpicked to walk with me in ministry. And, and not, you, you don't even know that this group, the, 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 um, the, the group that this man represents is actually going to nail me to a cross. <laughs> right? But he says this. He says, I, you know, he was amazed. He said, I tell you the truth. I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. Faith doesn't just belong to, the, to Israel. And don't you, um, don't you get this twisted? Because if we put this in modern day context, because if Israel then, rep, if the church then kind of represents what Israel represented then, um, in that context, that, that God is saying that there are some people who have faith on the outside of our group. Okay. And so look what he says. He says in verse 11, I tell you this, that many Gentiles will come from all over the world, from east and west, and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, at the feast in the kingdom. Let, let, me, let me say this again. This is chapter 8. Would y'all say this with me? This is chapter 8. Thank you. And, and look what it says. It says, I tell you this, that many, this, this is the key word, Gentiles. Gentiles. That means non-Jews. The people who are not part of that discipled group right now. Many Gentiles will come from all over the world, every part of the world, right? Which represented every kind of uh, practice and culture and religion. And he said Gentiles are going to call, come from all over the world, from east and west. And they will look at this, sit down with Abraham. They're going to be in fellowship because he's going to be the father of their faith too. Sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob at the feast in the kingdom of, of heaven. He said, but many Israelites, this is chapter 8. He's just finished the orientation. He's now just starting out to, to, to move about in ministry. He said, but many Israelites, those for whom the kingdom was prepared, many of those for whom the kingdom was prepared will be thrown into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but they're going into, uh, they're not going to be in a heavenly state. They're not going to be 
in, in, in the blissful pleasures of, of, of heaven. That he said, but, but Israelites, for those whom the kingdom was prepared, he said, they won't get there, but there'll be many Gentiles, the ones you reject, the ones they reject. He said, because, you know, that's, that's like playing church. That, that's like plain church. That's like um, that that that's like the church actually, um, you know, the, the, that that there will be folks who you would not normally assume would make it in to the kingdom, but they'll be there, and there'll be some folks that you would have expected would make it in because they were the regular church goers. They were the regular, but they but their hearts weren't right. And I got to ask you this question. Have you ever examined yourself and say, so, so you know, it, it's important that you ask yourself, what number am I in? What, what group am I in? You know, church is not, not a sanctuary for you. It's not a refuge for you if you really just don't believe Jesus. If, if, if it's just a performance, you know, if you're there and, and worship is the farthest thing from your mind, then, then you got to ask yourself some difficult questions and say, God, I need some work on my heart. Amen. Because he's really telling his disciples right from the giddy jump in the kind of first day one on the street with Jesus. He's telling these disciples that there's going to be folks who you would think are going to make it in, but they're not going to be there. The ones for whom the kingdom was prepared won't be there, but there will be Gentiles from all over the world that will embrace who I am. Is he your Lord? Now, you know, you say you made him your savior. You walked down the aisle. You took. You gave your life to Christ. You told the minister, yes, I'm a sinner, and I want to be saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. By grace are you saved through faith, not of works. You know what I mean? It's the gift of God, lest any man should boast. And, and, and we, we would say this, that we got to be careful that, uh, that, that we don't allow um, the, the practice of religion um, to take over in our lives. We, we don't want the practice of religion we we really want um, we we really want the the, the whole uh, reality of relationship. Who is Jesus to you? Who is he to you? He's my savior, but 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 he saved me from my sins, and I relinquish my sins to him. And you can't make him your savior without him becoming your lord. And when he becomes your lord. That means that he gets to call the shots in your life. When he says, you're right, he said, th this, uh, this Roman officer said this. He said, I know how this works. I'm a man under authority and I'm a man with authority. And when I say go, they have to go. And when I say come, they have to come. And he says this, that listen, and that's what a Lord is. That when Jesus says right is right, I, he, if he says it's right, I say it's right. Even if I don't like it. Even if I don't understand it, he's my Lord. And because I made him my savior, I relinquished my sin, which says that I'm not going to rely on myself anymore because I can, uh, I'm not a reliable, uh, I'm not reliable for my own salvation. I can't do it for myself. I needed Jesus to die on my behalf. That's what he did. And because he, there was an exchange. When he did that for me, what I did was I gave him my life. Did you give him your life? He's really, he's really kind of drumming this in day one, first day in ministry, drumming in some hard principles to these disciples that are walking with him. And look what he says in verse 13. We're almost there. Um, then Jesus said to the Roman officer, go back home. Because you believed, circle that, because you did what? Believed. It's simple. He said, not because um, you know, and the evidence of his belief was he opened his mouth and says, I know how this works. I'm a man under authority. I'm a man with authority. But, but he says, because you believed, because, and, and, and the heart is the place where you believe. He wouldn't have made a statement like that had he not believed that Jesus was able. He says, I, I wouldn't have even come to you. You know, when we open our mouths to pray, it's, it's really evidence of the fact that we believe God will do something about what we pray about. And sometimes people won't pray because they actually don't believe God will or that God can. Sometimes they don't believe, but, but the issue is here that when you take action, he said, because you believe, 
it has happened. What has happened? What you said. That's going to come in Mark chapter 11. But he says this. He says, what you believed, it has happened. You believed that I could heal your servant. You believed that I was able to do it. And because you believed, it has happened. What do you believe in God for? And the young servant was healed that same hour. Verse 14. Um, when Jesus arrived at Peter's house, Peter's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a high fever. But when Jesus touched her hand, the fever left her. So the interesting part is now one in one episode now we see that Jesus spoke and, and he said, your servant is healed, um, be healed. He told the, the leper, be healed. And, and the leper was healed. It came out of his mouth, the authority. But in this case, um, he, he touched uh, Peter's mother-in-law's hand. Wow. And she got up and prepared a meal for him. <laughs> right? She had a high fever. But he took the fever away. Just the, the authority is in his word. The authority is in his touch. My God. We're going to find out with a, a woman with an issue of blood reached out and touched the hem of his garment. The authority is in his personhood, but it's connected. It's, it's, it's in everything connected to him. My Lord. Um, verse 16. That evening, many demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. He cast out the evil spirits with a simple command, with a simple command, and he healed all the sick. This fulfilled the word of the Lord through the prophet Isaiah, who said, he took our sicknesses and removed our diseases day one he goes out several scenarios healing healing um, d diseases that none could heal um, healing people who weren't in his immediate um, in his immediate presence but in faraway places but the authority of the word he healed we got so many we, we got so many scenarios and that we, you know, so, so we don't want to try to make doctrines. You know, some people will try to make doctrines out of this. But, but, but the, bigger overarching uh, the, the bigger overarching doctrine is this, that Jesus is a healer. Whichever way he can touch and heal, he can send the word and heal. He can speak over a situation and heal. He can turn because he's got the authority over sickness. Y'all hear me? Um, that, that we're learning day one. This is who he is. He's got authority over sickness. That really just says um, that, that everyone who's getting ready to realize that, listen, I'm sick in my body, my mind, my circumstance, my situation. Sometimes it's the marriage that's sick. Sometimes it's the relationship between... Um, the, the, the mother and the daughter, the father and the son, the mother and the son, the father and the daughter, whatever, uh, between friends, girlfriend, you know, intended, is, you know, relationships, even in the church, um, relationships between um, pastor and the people or the or leaders and, 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 and the uh, congregants, it's the brothers and sisters, it's, it's the relationship that needs to be healed. Amen. He is a healer. Would you tell, would you just say it? He is a healer. My God is a healer. And the reality of that um, has got to impact the way you believe. It's got to impact the way you believe. Um, so look, look at this. I asked the question in the application of the text. What is the primary work of ministry that Jesus performed in the early part of this chapter? Um, the, meaning the verses we just read from 1 to 17. Obviously, that's healing. Remember, this was Jesus hitting the street after the Sermon on the Mount, training period, uh, training period with the disciples. As we examine our church vision statement, our shortened version is this, healing families, saving souls, transforming lives. We see a clear demonstration of where we should begin in ministering to others. How can we heal families? How can we heal families? Um, and everything with us at, at the church really starts with prayer. And I want to thank you all so much for those who were, who were able, for those who were praying, weren't able to come, but were praying. And for those of you who came to the yard and we combed the neighborhood and we prayed over people. We had, um, and, and I left that uh, document out on the website and, and on, the, uh, on the church app under resources. 
um, you can get a copy of that prayer guide and still just continue to pray that for for the people uh, in this community. Let's let let's do the work of ministry. It starts with us doing what we see our master doing here. That we you know that we don't have to knock on the door and be in the house for us to speak the word of healing. But we can speak the word of healing over someone who is away from us. Let's do that. Get the prayer guide. Download it. Um, just read one of those prayers and say, God, I speak this prayer. I, 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 I pray you make this happen for um, all the inhabitants on, on, on Eli Street. On, on Blue Ridge Terrace, on Boston Street, on, on Way Street, on, on Bonaire Drive. You just, you know, call out a street. You may not know the uh, residents, you know, Flamingo, Pelican, you know, all over. Take the map, go street by street and just say this, God, I, I speak this prayer right here for this. I, I go to the school and say, God, I speak this prayer for the school, for the for, for the um, the teachers, the administrators, the prayers are outlined there for you. And, and so we're asking that you would just be faithful and diligent to do that for us. Would you do it? Look at that. And so um, when we do this, when we say, um, when we say healing families, um, in order to save souls, people don't want to hear, um, no, people don't want to know how much you, uh, you know until they know how much you care. And so healing families is really starts with our prayer work so that the Lord would, would give us an opportunity maybe to, to bring some measure of healing to a situation in someone's home. To maybe uh, pray the prayer of, of healing over someone who is in, a, um, is in a situation of affliction, right? And so as we heal families, and families meaning that means father, mother, sister, um, boy, um, son, daughter, everyone in the family structure. But we want to pray for that, you know, healing families. And not just the individual units, but how about healing the entire family? Because some families are so broken because of situations and generational patterns and curses and situations that happen that, that the families are shattered and scattered and, and we want to be the agents that say, God, we, uh, that we speak like this uh, leper that says, God, I know you can do this. Will you do that? Will you say, God, you know what? I, I don't know how you do it, but I know you can. And tonight after the lesson, and I know you're willing. I know you're able and I know you're willing. And so would you, would you then take the ball and run from there? And say, God, you're willing and you want these people whole. You want them healed. We heal families. And as we heal families, we get an opportunity to witness to them about the power that we prayed from, the, the source of the power that we prayed from. That's saving souls. When we witness, just planting a seed. You don't have to be the one to get the actual soul to confess. Jesus gets, God gets the increase. But, but sometimes it's just our job to plant the seeds. That's part of the saving soul process. And then when, you, when they're saved, you can't let them go because, you know, they're going to find out, you know what, now that I'm in the Word, I'm, I, man, I'm messed up. I am messed up the way I think, the way I talk, the way I live, the way just all that I messed up. Transform lives, amen. Be, 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 be a, a disciple maker. Help encourage someone along the journey and say, stay at it. Stay in the race. Yeah, you might be having a difficult time. You might be living outside of the will of God right now, but stay in the race, Pray. Ask God to change your heart, to change your mind. You, you can't do it on your own, but God can. That's what we learned tonight. Okay. Um, and then we have a journal from the text. Just put down some of your thoughts. Maybe that, you know, something that God spoke to you and, and, um, and, and did for you as, as we just, you know, went over some of his word tonight. It's going to be this kind of thing all the way through chapter 12. Um, and 12 is powerful. Oh, my gosh. But, but um, all the way through chapter 12, we're going to see th this kind of thing where the disciples are just learning about him, about him. And they're going to be marveling, going, what kind of man is this? Where did he come from? How does he do this? Who is this? Is what they're really going to be asking. And, and so take the journey that the disciples took and ask the question, God, wow, who are you? And who are you to me? But who am I to you? Clothing ministry is going to be open this Saturday from 10 to 12. This Saturday from 10 to 12, the clothing ministry will be open. 
and we're going to ask that um, for those of you, um, you know, spread the word. If you know someone who's in need, um, we want to be of, of benefit to someone as we help someone. Um, and again, download the prayer guide. Continue the, the work of prayer because what, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Down deep down in your generations, I speak it so. I believe it. You know what? I don't have to see it to, 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 um, to, to actually believe that God requires this of me. If he did it, I model after him and I speak it into your life. And I don't have to, I, I'm, not, I'm not moved by, by when it doesn't look like it happened. Because I know what I know about God. And when it comes to pass, ha, glory, I shout in advance. Amen. All right. So that's, that, that's our Bible study for tonight. And we, um, we just thank you for being uh, attentive tonight. Thank you for your diligence, your patience. And uh, we'll be looking at 18 through 34. Like I said, not rushing through chapter 8 because there's some, there's some new stuff that there's going to be some... Uh, difficult sayings that we're going to address on next week um, that, that you know, we, we're going to pay attention to as we go through the book of Matthew. But the overall effect is you're going to know Jesus so much better. And that means we're going to have a so much more um, intimate relationship with him. Watch how your life will change. Let me pray for you. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord God, I ask you a blessing over this um, your, the, your beloved people, Lord God, your sons, your daughters, Lord God, over every household right now, God. I pray that every prayer um, that we pray, Lord God, that because the prayers of the righteous availeth much, Lord, that the prayers that we pray over the households of those that we don't even know, oh God, Lord God, may come to fruition even down in our generations. What we have made happen for others, you will make happen for us. God, that if we take care of your house, you'll take care of our house. And so we thank you, Lord God, just for the privilege of being your people. Lord God, make our hearts like yours so that you can not, not just be proud of us, but that you would receive glory from what we do. Lord God, and I pray that you'll bring ease, relief, and succor to situations that are in turmoil right now in the lives of your people, just to show them that you have not left nor forsaken, but you are very present, a help in the time of trouble. And we ask, oh God, these blessings over your people. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let every heart say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. We love you. And we ask you to worship our King. Remember again, clothing ministry will be open uh, 10 to 12 on this Saturday. We'll see you. God bless you.